Hello, this is Corey, and in today's core concept video, we'll be taking a look at PowerShell custom objects, and we'll look at some use cases for how we can leverage this in PowerShell scripts. Uh, before we get started, I thought we'd take a moment just to demystify objects for a bit. Um, first of all, what is an object? Um, Technically, an object is an instantiation of a class, but for using them in PowerShell, you really just need to know a couple of things about them. One is that they have things called members, and those members have both properties and methods. Um, and we'll take a quick look at a string. So we'll just write a string into a variable. Um, this string is, is uh, on the screen here in line 8 says hello I am a string object with a length of 58 characters and we'll put this into this variable and we'll call the variable string so now that we've got that there obviously if we call on that we return our string object now if we do uh, get type on this we see that this is a string the system knows that that's the type of object it is but all objects um, and everything in PowerShell is an object have these things called members and the members um, the way to get a member for something is uh, like on line 13 here you can pipe it into the get member commandlet we'll go ahead and do that with our string and it returns this list and you'll notice here uh, there's a column called member type and by the majority of these will be either what's called methods um, or properties and depending on the kind of object we're looking at in this case we're looking at a string there are going to be different methods and properties associated with that uh, instantiation of that uh, class the string class in this case so what is a property well a property is going to typically give you information about your object um, so um, one of the properties, matter of fact, the only one in the list here is length, so let's go ahead and run that. You can see it returns 58, and I kind of knew that in advance, that's why I have this 58 characters in my string. Um, that was intentional there. So that's how many characters, if you start with uh, H here and you count one at a time, there are 58 um, characters in this um, particular string object. Um, so as you can see that property of length is giving us information about the object. Well what do methods do? Methods those um, actually will allow us to do operations against the object. So there's a lot of really cool ones here like trim if you ever encounter a string that has byte space. Um, at the beginning or end that you want to trim out. There are trim methods for that. Um, the one that we'll look at here is called pad left. And let's say for some reason I wanted to add like four X's in front of it. Um, I could pad those to the left. So the way that you would do that, uh, anytime you want to invoke a, a, a method, you would do a, a period after the variable that contains the object, and then it's going to, uh, in the ISC, bring up IntelliSense and give you a list of all the available members, which will be, again, those properties and methods. So if we look at string and we do the period here, We've got our length property, and then everything here with a cube icon next to it is a method that we can do that's going to have some kind of an operation against that object. So um, the way that pad works is you, you supply it with a number, uh, and then a comma, and then the character you want to pad. So I want to do four X's in front of my string. Um, and since my length is 58, uh, to do 4, I would have to be uh, 58 plus 4, so that's going to be 62. So now when I run line 19, um, now you see it returned the 4 X's that it's padding to the left, and then it follows by my exact string after that. So basically looking at this example just know that everything's an object inside of PowerShell and all objects come baked in with their own properties and methods and these can be very powerful uh, and we can utilize those in a number of ways in our scripting life 
Now, with that uh, discussion out of the way, uh, let's actually move into talking about PS custom objects. Um, a PS custom object is basically a way to assemble data from other dispersed sources into a single object grouping so that you can then manipulate it in specific ways. And one of the use cases I've picked here is one that I've found valuable before um, as a system administrator. And sometimes you might need to get uh, or report on various aspects of your systems. You know, I've got a couple, uh, three different examples here at the top of this script for this video. Uh, one is about the uh, drive itself, maybe uh, the, vol the C volume. Um, one is about um, PuTTY, which I have installed on this computer. And then the other one is about a service just called, uh, it's the Adobe Update Service, and I want to get some information about this. Now, these are three arbitrary uh, things that I selected uh, just to emphasize the point of why a PS custom object might be good for uh, creating reports on various things. Um, there might be a time where you need to you know, provide a manager with um, a report about you know, the free space on uh, a thousand systems. Um, or, you know, and with that report, you might need to also report on if some service is running or if a certain program is installed. Um, and getting all of that into a single PS custom object is helpful because uh, what that will allow you to do here, um, and I've constructed that custom object uh, through uh, from lines 8 to lines 14 here. What that'll let you do is create um, specific names for the data, and then you can actually point to the data. And then that way, when you go to output that, it can all be very, very clean. So um, first of all, I'm getting this volume data. So if I were just to get this, let's go ahead and run this get volume, and we're piping it into where object, looking for drive letter C. And obviously it's returning some basic information, but we could pipe that into select object and then, you know, narrow that down. But for our purposes, um, we're just going to get that and put it into this drive variable. Um, we're also going to look at putty using get sim instance and put that into this variable. And then finally, we're using get service um, to put information about that service into this variable here. Um, ultimately, the PS object will construct that into this object variable. And if you look at the output here, um, you can see that um, each of these um, columns have the exact naming conventions that I want them to have. So drive health. Um, this could have been anything, but I... I find that with a PS custom object, you can name it something that makes sense. And then um, it's basically like key value pairs. Um, so if you're familiar with um, JSON or um, some kind of uh, other data structures like arrays and things like this, um, you can actually have the, the key and the value. So with this, you've got um, drive health, and then you've got the value here is healthy. And then for drive free space, we're using this uh, math. Uh, it's called a, a static uh, class uh, with a static method. And that way we can round um, and then report basically, um, you know, with it rounded up to a whole number on the number of gigs that we have left free. So uh, the putty, we just want to get the version information, and we want to have that be in a column called putty version. And then the same here with the Adobe Update Service, we want to get the display name and the startup type. And then you can output that to, you can export that to like a CSV file, which we'll go ahead and do here. And then if we open this, um, we can then make a, a pretty good report uh, from this that's very easily readable. 
I'll go ahead and enhance this a little. And then, you know, with a, with a few quick changes here, um, it can become a very readable report. And the other thing to note is, too, is that you can always insert more of these in here. Um, this is just an example on my local system, but using various types of PowerShell remoting with Git Sim instance, or um, you can start a Sim session, a PS session. Um, some of the commandlets in PowerShell, like Git service, have that all baked into the commandlet itself. Um, but there are numerous ways where you can open up connections to a whole host of machines, get this information, create a custom object out of it, and then you could just append those into your report. So this example is just reporting on one system, which is my local machine here, but you can easily scale this up to where you can go out and use various forms of PowerShell remoting to then collect this dispersed data, assemble it into a PS custom object, and then um, have it, you know, in a single report. Um, it's reporting about various different types of uh, things going on on the systems and the remote machines, but it's all consolidated into uh, a very easily readable uh, CSV report in this example. So hopefully this was beneficial. If you have any questions, uh, please interact with the comments below, and I'll see you on the next Core Concept video.